Hi everyone, welcome back. I am going to tackle a topic I've tackled before, but with Nikosh. Today we're gonna to talk about what I feed my toddler in a day, but we're focusing on Isla. So before I even get into what Isla's eating and stuff, I think it's really important to point out that all babies are different. And I don't just mean they're different in their preferences, but they're also different in what their needs are. So to kind of give you an example, Nikosh was a really easy eater. Like you would basically just put food in front of him and he would eat it, at least for a good while there. There came a point where he suddenly became a picky eater, but that was a little bit later in life, like in the first year, especially of feeding him, he was easy. To, to feed, whereas Isla's been picky from day one. Like she is very particular about how she's being fed. If you put something in front of her, you almost don't even know if she's gonna actually eat it or not. She'll maybe like taste it and then she'll like toss it. If she's not interested, she's very, very picky about what she eats. But in a weird way, it feels like she really is being very discerning about what she wants to eat. It's very interesting to watch her in this whole process because it's just a different experience than what we had with Nikosh. Another thing to point out is that Isla has different nutritional needs than Nikosh does. I think there's like the overall concept that every baby and toddler needs just a variety of nutrition and specifically like vitamin D and healthy fats. Those are like obviously important for all babies, but for for Isla specifically, she's a smaller baby, but she also does not like cow's milk. In fact, she doesn't like any type of milk. You know, I've been trying every single type of milk, cow's milk, chocolate milk. I've tried flaxseed milk, almond milk, coconut milk. She just refuses to take milk. She doesn't like it. And what's funny about that is she'll drink something else that's sweet. Like if I'm drinking juice or a tea or anything like that, she's actually very interested in drinking that. But for some reason you give her a sippy cup with milk in it and she is not interested whatsoever. So I've definitely had to tailor her diet and what she's eating around her own nutritional needs as well. So when it comes to Isla specifically, we feed her about five to six times a day. Three of her meals are real legit meals, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But then she has little snacks to maintain throughout the day as well. And again, I'm like trying to get her to gain a little bit of weight because she's such a little itty bitty. She's a little mini. So the way that Isla's day starts is with a packet of yogurt. We're all about like the Stonyfield kids yogurt. And we decided to give her that because it was actually something we did with Nikosh at one point. He used to like drink a sippy cup of milk. But you know, I find that with babies, especially when they're smaller and when they're younger as toddlers, so Isla's only a year old, they want something when they wake up. This is something that changes as they get a little bit older. Like with Nikosh, we can get up in the morning, even cuddle in bed, even start watching some TV or something. And he's not gonna say that he's hungry until we've actually like made some breakfast. So he can go like a whole hour after waking up without eating something. He doesn't like to, he gets hangry, but he can actually go like a whole hour without eating something when he first wakes up. Whereas Isla's still at that point where when she wakes up, she's just angry. Like she wants something, give her some kind of food. So we like to give her a little packet of yogurt the minute that she wakes up in the morning. And then that usually tides her over while we actually make breakfast. The thing with us is that we really like our babies to eat our meals and not have to make separate meals for them. It doesn't mean that I don't sometimes give Isla her own little separate things. Like every once in a while, I'll give her something like I've ordered, you know, services like Yumi, a little spoon, services like that where they have these pre-made meals for your babies. And there are also times where I'm just not hungry and it's lunchtime and I know that she's gonna be hungry. So I'll give her like her own little meal. But for the most part, especially breakfast and dinner, we make sure that our babies are eating the exact same food that we're eating. So with breakfast, a typical breakfast for us can be anything like scrambled eggs. I always eat toast in the morning for some reason. It's become a big habit of mine this year. It's not something I used to do. I actually don't remember eating toast outside of this year, but this year for some reason, I've really gotten onto eating toast. So I eat toast with butter. I make a piece of toast for Nikosh because he sees me eating it and he loves eating it. I make a piece of toast for Isla and she eats that too. You know, there might be other things that we have in our breakfast. Like if we make French toast or if we have waffles, anything like that, we'll make sure to make enough for both of the kids as well. So they're essentially eating exactly what we're eating. The only thing that's really different that the kids eat that I don't eat in the morning is that we'll also end their meal with with some kind of a fruit, any kind of berry, any kind of like an orange, any kind of fruit. We always end her meal with a piece of fruit because she just she just loves fruit, except for raspberries. I don't know why. She hasn't explained it to me yet because she can't speak yet, but she's not interested in raspberries. All right, so after breakfast, we'll let Isla play and everything. She always has water, by the way. We have a sippy cup of water 
with her at all times, like somewhere nearby, and she'll actually point to it and tell us when she wants water. So she'll get a little bit of water during her meals, but she'll also just get water throughout the day. Her nap is around 10.30. And what's really important to point out for her specifically is that she already is down to one nap a day. We have tried to keep her on the two nap schedule and she just was not into it. She's one of those babies that goes to bed for nighttime like pretty early. Like she's in bed by 7 p.m. at the very latest, but even sometimes a little bit earlier than that. So right before her nap, because we want her to be able to sleep peacefully for her nap and as long as possible. So around like 10, 15 or so, 10, 10, 10, 15, we'll give her a small snack. That can be anything like a peanut butter packet. I'm really obsessed with these MeWe peanut butter packets. I've talked about them before. They're just really straightforward. They're peanut butter, coconut oil, and some kind of a fruit like banana. So we'll give her a snack like that. You know, I've tried giving her olives. She's not into olives as much as Nikosh is into olives. We'll even give her stuff like, um, you know, maybe like a little bit of fruit, like some melon or something with a little bit of cheese or like some crackers. And then that'll be just enough to tide her over until she wakes up from her nap, which is usually like about two and a half hours or so. And then we'll move on to lunchtime. So our life with her is essentially scheduled around what she eats. All right, so when it comes to lunchtime, once Isla has woken up from her nap, I essentially, just like breakfast, move her right into eating her meal. So usually we'll have something prepped for her. And this is usually, if there's any meal that she's not eating that's the exact same meal as us, it's lunchtime. It's either because our schedules aren't lining up because maybe her nap ran a little, a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. So sometimes our lunches don't really line up together. So that's usually a meal that she has specifically for her. It can be very straightforward. I've, I've learned early with Isla not to force it. And this is something that I have been told for years, back even with Nikosh, pediatricians, caretakers, all of these people that I know that work with children and babies, they're always like, do not force your children to eat. Like they will eat when they are hungry. And even if they don't eat a lot for this meal, they'll eat more on the next meal. Like you do not need to force it. When it comes to planning out like a lunch for her, the way I like to think of it is to just make sure that I give her some variety. For some reason, we get really focused on protein. What is her protein? Like, is it gonna be chicken? Is it gonna be, you know, some kind of a meat? Is it gonna be cheese? Is it gonna be, you know, something, beans? We're always focused on protein and that's something that I've really had to like retrain myself to realize that Isla needs a lot of variety. Nikosh needs a lot of variety. I even need a lot of variety. That way I'm getting a lot of nutrients in instead of focusing on something like, what is my protein? I like I said, needs a lot more fats and stuff since she's not drinking any milk. So, you know, I'll grab like a string cheese for her, like a baby bell cheese or, you know, some kind of like beans. She loves black beans. And then I'll let her have, you know, crackers or fruit or, you know, peanut butter, just anything that might be in our fridge. A lot of the time, whatever it is that we ate for dinner the night before, we actually save it and it turns into Isla's lunch the next day. So that's usually what we tend to feed her. It's either our leftovers turn into her lunch or, you know, we just pull something out of the fridge. It would almost be something that we would consider to be like snacks, like lots of different snacks. And with Isla specifically, I only put a couple of pieces of her food at a time because I've realized that she's one of those babies that when she is done with food, like she doesn't want to eat any more of her fruit or her, you know, like the beans that we just gave her. She'll actually, if you have too much of it on her tray and she's done with it, she will take her hand and she'll just completely wipe it off of her tray onto the floor and be like, I'm done. You cannot give me any more of that. So I put just a couple pieces at a time on her tray. And then if she asks for more, which she does a lot, like she'll be like, I want more. Or she'll like point at the food that she wants. So sometimes I'll have like a plate of her food sitting kind of on the side on the table next to her and she'll let me know when she wants something. But I don't put everything all at one time onto her tray because she's not one of those babies. She, she just wants a little bit of what she's eating at a time. One thing that you'll notice is that there is like a continuous theme of foods that we feed Isla and those tend to be her snacks. That's when I go back to like the things that we, you know, like commonly give her, like maybe I'll go get her some cheese. Maybe I'll get her like a turkey slice cause she's obsessed with like deli turkeys. So those are kind of like the, the foods that I have in my back pocket pocket that I know Isla will eat. And actually that's a really good tip um, because I used to do this with Nikosh. I always had like snacks and different foods that I just knew Nikosh would eat. It was like, if he's not feeling like the meal that we're eating right now, and it just seems like he's still hungry, but he's not interested in what we're eating. Then I'll have some of the, some of the like in my back pocket meals. So for Isla, as you're probably hearing, it's like the different types of cheeses, the yogurt, the peanut butter, and some crackers. 
Those are usually the like go-tos for Isla and fruit obviously, but fruit just kind of finishes off all of her meals. It's like her dessert. So obviously after lunch, she'll get some play time and everything. And then we basically get to about 3, 3.30 p.m. in the in the afternoon. And that's when Isla needs another snack. This is a snack that I usually just, you know, use one of her staple items to get her through because usually the snack is one just to give her a little bit more fat in her diet. So it can be like a string cheese or another peanut butter packet. It, it just really depends on what she's already eaten during the day. Like obviously if she's already had a peanut butter packet in the day, I'm not gonna feed her another peanut butter packet sometime in the afternoon. So it's really like, when does one of her staple items come into play? So one of them will come into play for her afternoon snack. And that's just to get her through until dinner time because she's sort of like me where she can get a little bit hangry if she's hungry. So we like to make sure she's not, you know, getting grumpy about the fact that she's hungry. So we give her a little afternoon snack and then around like 5, 5.30ish, we give her dinner. And what's actually happened now, since we have two kids, Arun and I have actually moved our dinner up. So sometimes we're eating dinner at like 5, 5.30, 6 p.m. at the latest. And that's because we're eating with our kids at this point. And that has just made our lives easier. I think being, you know, like work from home and like the self quarantine stuff has also created this kind of environment for us where we can actually eat that early with them. Because when we were actually going to offices, especially Arun, he was working out of an office. We weren't always home in time to have dinner that early but since we're here with the kids it's easier to have dinner with them and not have to plan out two different meals dinner is when a lot of variety comes into the meals because that's when we like to have variety too and I think that's because I don't know it's like that same game that I'm sure a lot of people play with their husband or partner where they're like so what's for dinner tonight and it's like I don't know what do you want for dinner I don't know what you want for dinner and it turns into you know like trying to find something that's a little bit different the way it kind of goes with our meals throughout the week is you know like two or three meals will be meals that we order for delivery and those tend to be really different. Like we'll have pho for dinner. We can have some type of Mediterranean meal like kebabs or something or Greek food. We also like to get Korean food. If we order sushi, we're always like placing a sugar fish order, which is a popular sushi restaurant here. And so we get her edamame and make sure that, you know, there's enough for her and for Nikosh to eat. Nikosh is actually, P.S., starting to eat some real sushi. We've been testing that out with him too. And we always make sure she's going to eat food from our own dinner. So she gets a lot of variety when it comes to dinner. And then, you know, just depending on what time we ate dinner, like if we ate dinner as early as 5 or 5.30, then we might actually give her a snack, one more snack to just tide her over before she goes to bed. So she doesn't go to bed till about 6.45, 7 o'clock-ish, because she knows where the food is. So if she seems like she's a little bit hungry or she's like a little bit grumpy, we'll give her something like another yogurt packet, another peanut butter packet, a cheese. It's, again, we go back to the staples. So there's like variety happening in the main meals and then staples happening in between. So that's a good summary of what Isla eats in a day. She has lots of different food. And I think that's the thing I wanted to really point out is that we have our staples, but then we also make sure that we have a lot of variety for her. And you know, that's worked out for us with Nikosh. In a lot of ways, it's a very like selfish thing to you know, make sure that your kids are eating what you're eating because it really does open up the door to your children having these like big palettes and stuff where they're interested in lots of different food and they're not like focused on just eating one type of food. So we really wanted to make sure that our kids have a lot of variety, not just for the nutritional factor, but because we want them to just have, you know, this like experience with food. We love food. So we want them to be into food too. And then also because it just makes my life easier and makes my husband's life easier when we're not trying to plan out lots of different meals, especially now that there are two different mouths to feed. It's not just me and my husband trying to figure out what we want to eat. It's, you know, our two two kids and trying to figure out what they're gonna eat. So if we just plan our main meals for the whole family to eat, it just makes our lives easier. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of the ideas that you have for food for your kids, especially when it comes to the snacks and the staples. I think it's always just interesting to know what other people are feeding their toddlers and their babies. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.